In this video, I am going to walk through the process of capturing and preserving indigenous microorganisms, which is what we call IMO1 and IMO2, and it's what we use to make our very own homemade garden soil inoculant. We have other videos on our channel documenting this whole process, but I thought that it was about time for an update because I've learned a lot about this process and I want to share that with y'all. The more that I use this stuff, the more that I believe in it. You can tell me that compost is all you need or mulch or cover crops or whatever. If your garden is working, don't change a thing. But if you're looking for a way to bring the resilience, the bounty and microbial diversity of nature into your garden, you will be hard pressed to find anything quite like this in my opinion. So welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Taylor and I help gardeners explore sustainable and regenerative growing techniques to bless the environment and to leave the soil better than we found it. And in case you missed it, you can now download my free beginner's guide to IMO, the revised and updated version. It'll be linked in the description. This is what we'll be walking through if you would like to get your own copy so you can follow along and start to master this process yourself. So let's hop into the method. And you may or may not be familiar with all how this works, but I'm just gonna explain it as though you've never heard of it before. Indigenous microorganisms consist largely of bacteria, fungi, nematodes, and protozoa, majoring on the fungi and bacteria. And these microbes eat various foods that supply them with the ability to multiply themselves. Generally speaking, fungi enjoy woody material and bacteria enjoy fresh green material. Both will happily feast on simple carbohydrates though, like rice. So in order to attract these microbes that we're going to find out in nature, we are going to offer them a carbohydrate in the form of a grain substance. Now, when I was first trying to collect IMO, I found it really challenging to catch it using the traditional white rice. Now, it's not it wasn't impossible, but I would get bad collections or very limited microbial collections more often than not. And what I found is, is that there were other grains that actually worked a lot better for me, namely barley and whole oats. I've also found success with buckwheat and millet and even just brown rice seems to work a bit better than white rice for me. You can check out our video on how I came to that discovery. But in essence, my advice is to think about what grains are grown in your general area and try those out. So if rice is not a crop that's grown or able to be grown in your area, perhaps you would find better luck using a different grain. For me, I just find that barley holds on to its moisture a bit better. It gets me consistently clean collections compared to white rice which seems to go all over the board and usually dries out. Of course, this is just going to depend on your local environment and what you have available to you. And you gotta experiment cooking your grain longer or shorter, using more water or less water. All those factors matter. For me, I find that pearl barley thoroughly rinsed of its starch and then cooked for 20 minutes, one to one in water works best for me. For my collection containers, I've used a few different ones over the years, but the main ones that I use Right now, these days, is a simple four and a half inch by nine inch cedar box that I make myself. You can check out our video on how to get a good IMO collection every time to see how I make it. This is my collection container of choice. I fill this up a third to a half of the way filled with steamed barley after it's cooled down and it's all set. So I wanna show you a few collections that I did to give you a sense of how this works. Before doing that, I wanna address something. Inevitably, you know, you start talking about IMO and people are going to just start hopping in with their take, which I welcome. Please make your points in the comments. It's always interesting to hear from people with different opinions and point of views. I am not going to try to cover all my bases here by explaining every detail of why I'm collecting IMO in this specific way. There are a lot of ways that you can do this. This is the method that I have found the most reliable and effective. And there are a couple reasons, main reasons that I wanna share for that. First of all, this is a fairly non-invasive approach. I'm essentially disturbing the local ecosystem as little as possible while getting what I consider to be a superior result. Second, I'm allowing the initial colonization to occur in the IMO's natural environment. It's a gentle, gradual sort of coercing the microbes to colonize the grain rather than trying to force nature to bend to my will. And I think doing it this way is really elegant. It's partnering with nature and it's a, a deeply rewarding process. If you have another way that you like to do it, that's great. This is how I like to do it. And if you'd like to give it a try, that's what this video is for. So it was late summer when I made these collections. It's good to get multiple collections at different times of the year and in different locations so that you can really maximize that full spectrum of diversity. But even a single collection is great if you're able. I have three kids under the age of five 
at the time of this video. And Cassidy and I can't quite afford childcare at this point in our lives, nor do we really want to send our kids off so that we can work. So we split our work hours and we get to spend lots of times with our wonderful kids. That said, we have very busy lives and tromping out into the woods to put out a few collection boxes is not something that naturally finds its way into my schedule. So I'm oftentimes bringing my kids along for the ride, which always makes things interesting. As I was filling these three boxes, uh, you might be able to hear my three-year-old in the background. She was pretty upset about something. Mostly, I think she just needed a nap because she ended up taking one and staying home with mom as my four-year-old and four-month-old came along with me. And I love getting to include my kids in this process because first of all, they love getting to participate and also they're learning a really unique skill and honestly a worldview in regard to the way that we treat our soil and seek regenerative growing techniques. So I'm happy being a little bit less efficient with my time if it means that they get to see what I'm up to. About iron oh, we have we make iron oil and we put iron oil on oh, on plants. For this first collection, I wanted to check out a new location. This is a public park with a fair amount of nature. I perused the area for probably a half hour until I found this nice meadow sort of off the beaten path. And what I'm looking for here is just an area where it looks like no one has been walking around or dropping trash. I'm also looking to see if the leaves have fallen and decomposed underneath the tree's canopy. And crucially, I'm looking for visible mycelium under the leaf litter. Now in this particular spot, it was very dry. It was late summer and we hadn't had any rainfall over the last month. So I really had to check around for quite a bit for any signs of microbial life. I also had our baby in the front pack, Carrier, and my shins were starting to burn from squatting. So in the end, I settled for some less than ideal spots. It's hard to see on camera, but I did end up finding some twigs and leaf litter with a little bit of white covering them. And that's what I decided to place on top of my box and underneath it. After putting the boxes on the ground, I also always make sure to cover them up real nice so that they don't get discovered by a person who happens to be walking in the area. I have had my boxes found before, I'm assuming by a person, because they were just unburied and sitting out in the open. If that happens or your, your collection may not be completely ruined, but it's really not the ideal, you want these boxes to be kind of sitting undisturbed as much as possible. Now I left these three boxes and I consider this day zero because you really can't expect anything to happen colonization wise within the first 12 to 24 hours. I like to put out multiple boxes at once so that I can get a good shot at a good collection. And the way that I do this is by collecting one box at a time. You can take a sneak peek at your grain a few days in if you'd like to, but you run the risk of compromising the collection once you open the covering. There's yeasts floating around above the rice and the fungi is sensitive to disturbance. If you're going through all the trouble of getting into the woods for a collection like this, you wanna do it right in my opinion. So after a few days, three to be exact, I went back to retrieve my first collection box. This time I was solo. I like going in early in the morning before the sun is high. And when I picked up my first box, I was expecting a very mild collection, more immature than what I actually got. Temperatures were in the upper 50s at night to the upper 80s in the day. So it's definitely warm, but you can see here that there was some decent colonization happening. The grains were very lightly covered in fuzz. White and gray is what we're looking for here. And that's what we're seeing. The only thing is that the biological bloomage was not very intense. It hadn't covered the top of the grains to indicate a complete colonization. Typically, I'm looking for it to climb up the sides of the container a bit, and we didn't see that in this collection box. So if I had seen less development, I would have waited a few more days before retrieving the second box. But since we were seeing a good amount of saturation between the grains, it gave me the sense that we needed to go out the next day. I preserved some of the best bits from this collection just to have it. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can remove the contaminated bits like that blue and green mold. Here I just weighed out my 40 grams, about 40 grams, and then I just added brown sugar to mix it up. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but this is a crucial step that you wanna do as soon as possible after opening your collection box. The next day I went out into the park. Luckily it only takes me about 20 minutes to get there. And what you can see on this next collection, just about 24 hours later, is that the fuzz is covering quite a bit more of the top. It's clean to the side of the box. And as I took it out of the container, the grains were quite infused. This was a nice surprise, considering I didn't feel super confident in the spot that I had selected in the first place. 
And same with the first collection, I weighed out the best parts of this collection and added an equal amount of brown sugar by weight. Now this was a sufficient collection in my opinion, but we obviously still had the third box to retrieve. So the next morning, Cassidy and I both went out to get it. We had the grandparents watch our kiddos. Something kind of random that I'll say about these collections is how warm they get when the grains get colonized. I can literally feel the heat radiating out of the bottom of the box. It's so interesting how warm it is on the bottom. Mm. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Now, what's so interesting to me every time that I collect IMO is how fast the IMOs colonize and how rapidly they can develop and multiply. This third collection showed more of the clean white and gray fuzzy forest biology and also a little bit of contamination around the edges, some yellow bits and blue-green mold. You can see a fair amount of dew and condensation on the top of the collection. And overall, as I tore into it, I felt like it may have gone over a little bit, which is totally fine. Still took out the best bits and went ahead and mixed them up in brown sugar right then and there in the forest. Something that I would highly recommend is to try to engage with your sense of smell. This particular collection smelled like beer to me, like an amber ale. And that's not always what it smells like to me. Sometimes it's garlicky, sometimes it's just really yeasty. This one smelled a little alcoholic. Kind of interesting. It actually smells, um, it smells like beer. You should smell that. <laughs> now, as far as the brown sugar, there is a small misconception here I found, and that is that the sugar is not actually being used as a food source exactly. Of course, it might feed the microbes a little bit, but the primary reason that we use sugar to preserve our collections is because of its ability to dehydrate the microorganisms. And this seems odd because what we actually see happen is that it becomes quite moist, almost syrupy. But that's actually the point. The sugar draws moisture out of the colonized grain substance through osmosis, and then it keeps the IMOs locked up, sort of suspended in that syrup, where they're actually unable to multiply because there's not enough air or moisture. I like to compare this to raw honey. If you know about honey, you know that it contains lots of microbes, yeasts, bacteria, enzymes, but those microbes don't ferment the honey because there's not enough moisture, there's not enough water. Once you start adding water though, the microbes can start traveling around and they feed on the sugars in the honey and they start making mead. So that's what's happening here with our IMO and this stuff is what we call IMO stage two. Now I wanted to share another collection that I did around this time. Again, I'm getting new collections from a different area than we've gotten them before and I wanted to get some IMOs from a much higher elevation. So in our area of Spokane, Washington, we have Mount Spokane and that's where we went to collect. This is a bit out of the way from where we currently reside. So for this collection, I put four boxes out and I collected them all at once four days later because I didn't want to travel an hour out and an hour back four days in a row. So chose to wait four days after placing the boxes, which in retrospect, I probably should have waited a little bit longer. Temps were a little colder this week, plus we were at a higher elevation. Another day or two would have been a little bit better, but it was forecasted to rain and I hadn't placed any sort of rain protection over my boxes. So I felt like it would be best to go a little bit earlier. And before we dive into these collection boxes, I will admit that when I drove back up to the mountain, I forgot exactly where I had placed my boxes. I thought I would be able to just wing it, but there was an almost identical looking pull off to the side of the road where I had hopped out the last time. And so I literally started walking up the side of the mountain looking for where I placed my boxes and I couldn't find them. And it was at this moment that I was extremely grateful to have dropped a pin on my Maps app because when I pulled it up, I came to realize that I had been searching about a quarter mile down the road. And this is something that I always do no matter what, whether I think that I'll remember it or not, I always drop a pin on my map. Mark it on the map, take pictures, and I recommend that you do the same because even after driving up the road a little bit and finding my actual collection site, it took me a sec to find the boxes. I had apparently disguised them quite well. Anyway, I packed these up, brought them home, and cracked them open, only to find a dissatisfying amount of fungal colonization. Not nothing, mind you, but the not the really robust, mature collection that I was hoping for. For these boxes, I had tried out uh, two with white rice and two with barley. Interestingly, in two of the boxes, one rice, one barley, I caught practically nothing at all. Whereas you can see with the other boxes, I got at least some good stuff. So as before, I picked off the fuzzy bits, mixed them up in my brown sugar, and just like that, now I've got four new IMO2 collections. 
In an upcoming video, we'll show you how you can take these and process them further until you get to where you can actually start to incorporate them in your garden. But to conclude this video, I wanna summarize a few of the key takeaways. And the first one being, if you have tried this or are going to try this after watching this video, please respect the environment and the area that you're collecting from by disturbing it as little as possible and leaving the site as close to its original state as possible. Scrape back the leaves to cover up the forest floor when you're done. We obviously want to respect nature that we're borrowing from. Second takeaway is to try multiple times, maybe a lot of times, to get collections from different places at different times of the year. Change up the way that you cook your grain, how much water you add, how long you cook it. All of these things matter. Another takeaway is to preserve your collection as soon as possible after removing it from the forest. To add plenty of sugar to keep those microbes on lockdown so that they don't eat themselves to death. Keep them from fermenting just yet. We'll do that when we make IMO stage three. And one of the most important takeaways that I can recommend is to document. Take pictures, drop a dang pin because you won't regret it if you do and you might regret it if you don't. Don't risk it, save yourself the hassle and heartache. If you would like to send me pictures of your collections, I would greatly appreciate that. I love receiving those from you. You can send them via email to taylor at thegriffinfamilyfarm.com. Let me know what you appreciated or hated about this video in the comments. It's always great to see both. If you're able to keep things constructive and respectful, I know that that's not always possible so you do you. Guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you're struggling to get your first IMO collection or if you've tried a bunch but haven't quite got it down, you'll wanna check out this video on how I caught IMO with every single grain, nine ones actually, to be more accurate. Check out our free beginner's guide to IMO linked in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.